Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter and today's video is going to be a bit different because it's going to be a video on a project that I have been planning for a while I'm not going to beat about the bush I'm going to get straight to the point because you all know what this project is you've seen the title of the video and before I did this video it was announced on Twitter and Facebook but this is a 009 project that I have on the go which is something that I have only planned while I, while I was away on holiday down in Mid Wales at Barmouth, which I have uploaded the videos from that which I'm sure you've all would have seen by now if not then go and watch them now like I said this project was only planned during the holiday because as you know down in Wales there's quite a lot of narrow gauge lines with the exception of the Langoflin which is standard gauge every other preserved line in Wales is narrow gauge there's the Tallyclin Railway the Festiniog Railway the Barla Lake Railway, the Snowden Mountain Railway, which is narrow gauge, the Wells Highland Railway, and so on. There's just loads of them down in Wales, so I can't list them all in this video because it will take me forever in a day. And so it got me thinking why not do a narrow gauge project, which narrow gauge is basically 009 scale? Now, before I go into in depth in this video, I just want to explain a couple of things. First of all, this is not going to be a separate layout I'm going to be doing. Instead, the idea is I'm going to be combining 009 with 00 gauge on the layout I already have. So, essentially, it's going to be standard gauge and narrow gauge, if you get the idea. And also, I'm not going to be getting out of double O gauge, I'm still going to be buying double O gauge stuff, there's the Duchesses coming out in November I think and the new Hornby H class that's due out in I think it's October not 100% certain at the time of filming this video but at the moment the double O nine project is going to be a bigger priority so I want to get that up and running so over the next several weeks I'm going to be buying 009 stuff to get the project up and running basically so that's track wagons coaches and locomotives when I can get them basically but anyway with all that said and done let's really get into this project so I'm over here by the layout which I'm sure you're all wondering at this point where is the 009 track going to go well I'm going to show you Remember the track that used to run all the way up here, around there, up there, down here and all the way along here, it's all gone. As you can see, it's all been ripped up, which I did this off camera, but what's going to happen is, where that track used to be that was double O gauge, it's going to be double O nine. So what's going to happen is, the track will run up here all the way up here all the way along there it's also going to run up there as well it's going to run all the way down along here around here then down this incline round here and along here and then round by this station it's going to run all the way up here as well and then it's going to run up here because there's going to be a bridge and it's going to run up and along across the sea so there's going to be a bridge across the sea and it's going to come down here and back down to here now how interesting is that? that will certainly add a lot more interest and excitement on the layout especially to have it crossing the sea because in reality you do get railways crossing the sea my original idea was to have an end-to-end -end section of 009 track so essentially it would start from here and end up here and have a little station but I thought that would be a bit boring because well casting your memories back to when I first joined YouTube and the first videos uploaded anybody remember the Chernobyl Valley model railway? that was an end-to-end -end layout now as different as they are, they can be a bit boring. Because the problem I have with end-to-end -end layouts is you can't exactly 
run your models in properly. You have to keep running them backwards and forwards every so often. They're difficult to film when you're making videos and you can't leave your models to run around the layout like the layout I have here basically because they just run from one end to another and back again and that does get a bit boring if I'm honest so I scrapped that idea and went for a more interesting idea to have it in the have it running around in the way that <laughs> the layout is itself but adding more interest by having it go across the sea on a bridge because that really will be quite interesting we know how we're going to do the bridge but that's going to be later in this video and also I should point out at this point I have wanted to combine two different gauges on one layout for ages now it's something I very nearly did in the past because in the past I did actually plan an engage project to have it running up here which some of you might remember and I actually did a couple of videos on that but they got removed because the project went down the toilet because engage is too fiddly and to be honest I'm not really a cup of tea on engage but 009 scale is not that fiddly at all and also to be honest with you combining narrow gauge with standard gauge is going to be a lot more interesting because engage is just basically double O gauge but scaled down so basically the locomotives and coaches and rolling stock they're basically standard gauge locomotives but in a smaller scale if you know what I mean in model scale I should say rather so yeah double O gauge and engage combined together in one layout that doesn't really work in my opinion double O nine and double O gauge definitely works and it's a lot more realistic as well and it's more interesting as well and also my model railway videos will certainly be a lot more interesting as well with narrow gauge in them that's not exclusive of, exclusively the reason why I'm doing this project but you get the idea okay so first of all like I've said before off camera all the track running up here and down here has been ripped up because I thought that would be a bit boring doing that on camera and what we've done down here is we've added this big piece of cardboard it excludes all the random objects on it that's just weighing it down because it's been glued down and the glue is drying and we've done that because it's to reinforce this basically well, there's a bit of cardboard sticking out of there oh, get rid of that oh, put that to one side but basically before this, well just look at that that wasn't brilliant and so we've basically put this thick card on it to reinforce it if that's the right word because some of this is going to have to be a bit modified in a way to accommodate it remember the track that used to bend round there that's going to have to be modified so it's no longer going to be in an entire curve there but not much else is going to be modified apart from that but it's going to be a sort of play it by ear thing but we know how we're going to do it obviously <laughs> but some of it will sort of be modified. This, for example, has been modified slightly. But it's going to get redone, this bit here anyway, so obviously the cardboard is not going to be visible on it. But that bit over there I've just mentioned, where the curves used to be, that's going to change, and so that bit there will be modified up a bit, but other than that, it's not going to really need to be modified any much else. What we have also done is down by the station there. You'll notice I have removed the station building, which came with the railway children train back. That is because, well, if we just put that back on, you can see that overhangs the platform there, which isn't very realistic at all, so it doesn't entirely fit on it. It does if I do it like that. But then again, it's in the way, so to speak. Because in reality, 
it would be a bit farther back on the platform rather than having it close to here. So I've took that off. I don't know where I'm going to put it now though. I'll, I'll think of something, I'm sure. Because I'm sure I can find a use for that in the future. Also, what I have done here is the grounded couch body, which is just here, has been taken off. That's had to be removed as well. And all the security fencing has had to come off as well. Some of it I broke in the process. Whoops. But to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to have much of a use for the security fencing now in the future. I don't know. You never know though, I might find a use for it in the future, but right now, there isn't going to be much of a future for it. I don't know what's going to go here, I might just put some static grass. I might even put a slight embankment on it or something. I don't know. I'll figure that out later. Also, some of the sea walls there, or s sorry, some of the walls on the seafront there that used to go here, have had to be removed to accommodate this bit of cardboard. And so now I've just put that bit of wall there. I could, however, do something like that still. But either way, I will work something out. The boats on the ocean are going to have to go as well. Though they'll be moved on the ocean to a different spot. But that's what I'm going to do later. Now up here, these buildings are going to go as well. And all this clutter around here is also going to be taken off. My idea here was that it's supposed to be like an abandoned sand house. Which is what these buildings are. But I've had a much better idea. This is all going to go at the top of here, and instead what I'm going to put on here is bits of real slate that I have. There's some in the garden actually, but also I have got a load of it in a tub. On the workbench, just there. I need to break some more bits up, but what's going to happen is all this will go at the top and I'll put some slate up here. Because my idea is to have a sort of slate mine at the top of here, so basically engines will put slate wagons or slate hoppers up here. So basically you can have it so that the slate wagons are either going to be emptied out or loaded up with slate here. So that will certainly add a lot more interest onto the layout as well than, well, basically just this at the top of here. In fact, actually, to be honest with you, the track I had up here before, that was never used. In fact, actually, the track up here was hardly ever used at all. There were a couple of videos where I did use it, but after that I didn't use it at all, to be honest with you. And so I think double R9 track is going to be a lot more appropriate for running up here. Especially to have it up here, because it kind of makes sense to have double R9 track up here and have a slate mine, so that engines push wagons up here to get slate emptied out, or them to be loaded with slate, so they can go off and deliver it somewhere or whatever. So that will also add extra interest. Now we have already got some double R9 pieces of track here. There's only a few pieces here. There is going to be a lot more track bought, obviously. But we bought these as a starting point. And as a reference. So basically it was to tell how much more track we needed. Especially when it came to curves. We have got some more track on order. But basically... Instead of buying a whole lot of track in one bulk, we're going to concentrate on this area first. So the rest of the track that we've ordered, plus the track we've got here already, should be enough to get this area all sorted out. Because the track up here, and along down there, round by the station, and up there, and up a bridge, and coming all the way down there, that's going to be easy to do. But up here, the reason why we've bought only some track to begin with is basically so we can concentrate on getting this area sorted out first, rather than buying it all in one bulk and doing it all in one so go. So as soon as this area has been done, we can then concentrate on doing the rest of it basically, so that includes up here and 
all the way down there by the station and up the bridge and then all the way back down there so it's getting all this bit here out of the way first but to the sand house and all that clutter at the top of here has now gone those bits that I had at the top of there which is what I call the clutter basically just all the mould bits and bobs have all gone into the spares box just there and the buildings are at the top of there as you can see here just here yeah that has got ripped off of there but oh well doesn't matter big glue cut disguise set up I don't know where I'm going to put these buildings now if I'm honest with you I might figure that out in the future where I can put them or I might not be able to use them at all but it doesn't matter anyway because they're not going to be used up here and yes I, ha I am aware that some of this scatter has got ripped off as you can see here but that does not matter because well I don't think I really need scatter up here to be honest anyway because all slate's going to go here it's all going to be a sort of slate mine as I explained to you earlier so it doesn't matter about these bits being ripped off here because they'll be disguised with all the slate there okay so what we've done up here is we've been packing down this gap that was down along here also this has been screwed in firmly because it was loose before so that looks a bit better what we've done is, is basically filled in this gap that was down here and what we've done is basically put down some carrier bags in there rolled up and some cotton wool which we have put watered down PVA glue on it's now dried but it is going to get painted anyway so it's not going to really be all that noticeable to be honest and also up here you've glued this piece of card on here because this area wanted to be flat and this area here wasn't flat well not flat and uh, smooth yes we needed this area to be a bit smooth and it wasn't round here so we've glued that piece of card there and it looks much better now it looks a bit smoother but again that bit's going to get painted up anyway and also scatter's going to go on there anyway so it's going to be almost like it was never there in the first place down along here I might put some walls or fencing or something down along there I don't know I have got some of them brick walls left over which I used for the poor garden and the seafront so I might use them to run along here or I might just leave it as it is, I don't know yet okay so what I've done is I've painted these bits here grey as you can see the reason I've painted them grey is because well as track's going to go there and ballast is going to go there as well I thought it would be suitable to paint them grey and that does look quite nice what I have also done as well is all this here has been painted green as you can see yet there is a few areas such as the and there where it's gone over but it doesn't matter because it's going to be covered over with ballast and also this here is going to be covered over with scatter anyway we also touched up a few areas around here as well which I thought I might as well do it while I'm at it and also all along here that was grey I have painted green I still don't know what's going to go here yet I'm still deciding on that but I will figure some out later and then over here and all along here I have made some touch ups basically where bits of this had ripped off and you could see what was used to make it basically so I've gone and sorted that out and painted over them which does look a bit better Okay, so this parcel has just turned up in the post by Yodel because this was delivered by a courier 
and in this box we have the track that has just arrived. Just take off this elastic band. They have used a big box for this track, but they probably don't have any small boxes, so that's not really much of a problem. But anyway, so in here we have some more of these double straights. We actually do have a couple of these. There's at least four packs of them. So put those down to one side. I'll just put them just here. Because I haven't got anywhere else to put it. Although, hang on. Yeah, I've just moved that box. I can just put it there and something just fell down the back. There, but I'm not going to worry about that. We also have some more of these double curves. Then we have some of these standard curves. There's eight of them in there. And last but not least, we have... I'll just bin that box to one side. We have a left-hand point. Now, this is the only set of points that we're going to have in this 009 project. And these points are going to go over there. And they're the only points that are going to be on the layout, as they're not going to be really needed anywhere else. So that's why there's only one set of points. So all this track that's just arrived, plus the track that we already have here, should be enough to get this area here sorted. Okay, so the first bit of track has been laid down. We've put the points there. We put half a curve there. A straight piece there, which is the full straight, and a full curve there. And then up there we've had a full curve, a long straight and a full curve. You get the idea with that. So that's the first bit of track put down. We will need to put something under that track there to support it. Well, yes, that's the first bit of track put down. Okay, so that track has indeed been enough to do this area. With the exception of, well, three pieces of track, one straight that should go over there. But, in the process of connecting the track together, a couple of fish plates have been damaged. Here is one of them. I mean, just look at that. If the camera will focus. I mean, I did try cutting down some double O gauge fish plates in order to connect the track together. But that wasn't going to be. So I've had to. I have bought some more track on order which includes a pack of fish plates so I'm going to have to wait for the fish plates to arrive before that piece of track can go over there which means once it's done all that area around here will then pretty much be completed but that's just one of them things those things do happen we also have a couple of curves left which we can use as spares. We have this one, which is a half curve, which basically if you get two together and connect two together, it basically becomes a full curve. Of course we have a full curve left as well. So we've got two spare pieces of track and one that's waiting, well, for fish baits basically. And also, I will need to put a fish plate on the end of that track there. But hopefully by this coming Monday, I should receive the track and the fish plates. So this project is really shifting forward. Well, tonight, just to show you what we've done, the track... Well, we've started putting down the track that comes down here. 
Obviously, we're going to bet this far because more track has been hoarded. We need more track. But it bends around here. There's a straight bit of track there, which then bends round into the tunnel there. Comes round there, down along here, round there, up by the points, and then it comes down here. Up that gap in the track is where that one straight piece is going to go. And then it comes all the way down round here. Up to here. Also, that bit of ballast there is going to be scraped away and then painted over as well. Just getting a bit of dust off the layout. Some of you might ask why well, I've got bits of card under certain pieces of track. Well, that's just packing basically because those bits needed to be added. Sorry about that then, I've just knocked the ladder that's just beside me. So yeah, all these bits of card under here are packing. Just to simply even the track out so it doesn't rise up in the air. But it is going to be covered up anyway with ballast and paint as well. So it isn't going to really be visible once this project is finished. And also, we have started laying some track up here. But the rest of it will be finished as soon as we've got the main part of the double online project finished. Which all we need to do now is... It's just all straight bits now mainly, and a few curves. So it's all this to do down to here, and up to there, and then all that down round to there, just by the seat. Okay, so this parcel has just arrived in the post. Well, it actually arrived the day before I'm filming this clip, actually. But nonetheless, so we've had all this track arrived, including the fish plates. So all in here, it's, it's all mainly straights and one pack of curves, but all the rest of it is straights basically. So I'm not going to waste any time talking about all this track. Let's get it all laid down. Okay, so one thing I have been doing is painting these pieces of cardboard underneath the track in various places. That area there, I'm thinking of reshaping at a later date. Those bits of cardboard under there, I haven't bothered painting them because, well, scatter and ballast will cover those bits anyway, so it's not going to really matter that much. So that's just a quick show of this bit here. Now, the bridge is the main thing I want to talk about. We are sticking with the idea of having the bridge go across the sea. One of the boats however has had to be removed, in fact actually that one over there will also have to go. And also there are some figures on the beach as you can see. One or two of those had to be moved out of the way to accommodate the bridge. So what we've done is we've made this ramp out of cardboard and obviously got these which are these card brackets sort of type things to hold it in place. And we've then got these strips of black card here. One's fallen off. I'll just take care of that. I might need to re-glue that actually. Yes, yeah, some of them it's gonna have to be re-glued, but what's gonna happen is this is then gonna be covered over with carrier bags, which I have used for things like this here, this hill, and it works quite well. And all, all this around here has been made by carrier bags, and so I can do it for this here. Ignore that big stone there, that's just there as a weight basically. And so that is going to be one of the supports for the bridge, if that's what you want to call it. Made out of polystyrene. And so what we've done is we've got that piece there, 
and then you've got that bit there, so it avoids the track basically, so engineers can still get around those bends there. We've got the bends there, of all the curves we've got, we've got four in the pack, those two have been joined up and some of those two, which are just over there. We also need to make a ramp for up there, so that bit of cardboard there is probably going to get chopped off to be honest with you, but that doesn't really matter. It's all part of the fun. So that's an update on the bridge. So we are sticking with it going across the sea, like I say, which I'm happy with. But I'm not going to show you building this bridge on camera, or anything of the track lane for that matter. Just in case this video gets a bit too long and possibly a bit too boring otherwise but you know I don't have to necessarily make this video showing everything being done on camera so I can talk about it about what we've done in various clips which is what I've been doing so far also some of the track has been laid down here as you can see this will be connected up to here but obviously we've had to disconnect it in order to make the ramp on the first part of the bridge so it's that. Okay, so I have covered over those bits of cardboard with some carrier bags, PVA glued on in place. That's done on this side and this side here, which you can just about see. So now I've got to paint it with some green paint which I've got over here. So this will be quite fun to paint. I haven't bothered painting that bit there because that will probably get repainted into a different colour or covered up with something anyway. I've also got to paint the top bit here. Basically this cardboard strip. Because until this has been done I can't really put this track on. Okay well I have painted over this bit here, that polystyrene block there is going to be painted grey and probably get covered up with some other things anyway yeah but in hindsight the green paint not a total success yeah I mean that green paint I've used is quite runny so it could be a case that I need to put more than one coat on when this is dry or it means we just might have to use a lot of scatter to cover it up because there was going to be scatter and bushes and things on here anyway so I might need to use a lot of that to do it but it should still look quite nice it has worked fairly decently though on the cardboard strip at the top there the other side it's the same story so i just got to wash the brush out and this other one because I've been doing some gluing as well and then we'll move on from there ok so this area is now pretty much almost done some scatter has gone on it but also I have done a bit of repainting as well yeah I mean there's another few areas such as that and there they have a bit of white showing but that doesn't matter because I am going to get some bushes on here as well in various places so I can use the bushes to cover those bits up so now I suppose I can get this track connected back up and start doing some more work with the bridge okay so that track has been connected back up I know there is a bit of a gap under there, but that can be sorted out. But it will be sorted out. And that will probably get covered up as well, so it won't be noticeable once it's finished. So now we're going to move on to the next part of the bridge. So it's really starting to come together now, this project.